we have seen how bundles of axons cause diffusion to be biased along the direction they are anatomically oriented. We've also seen how diffusion gradients lead to signal loss measured in many directions, and the more signal loss along the magnetic gradient direction, the more diffusion is inferred. And we know how to convert these measures of NMR signal to a cue ball shape. These cue balls are models of diffusion density at many orientations, and as such we interpret their peaks to indicate fiber presence. This is also true for fiber crossings, where cue balls can properly represent two or more preferential diffusion orientations. However, diffusion orientation density models like this cue ball are inflated relative to the underlying anatomical fiber tracks. Problematically, these inflated models are poor at distinguishing fiber tracks crossing at closer angles. These situations can cause errors when determining where axons are, sometimes estimating two separate tracks as a single bundle. To improve these situations, we can model the actual fiber orientation density instead of the diffusion orientation density. The goal of these models is to be more closely related to the underlying fiber anatomy, and less likely to suffer from inflated related errors. To create fiber orientation estimates, we begin with a response function. The response function is an ideal representation of what diffusion density would be if a voxel was comprised of one coherent fiber bundle. A response function can be created theoretically by what we know about diffusion and anatomy, or with diffusion data from a voxel known to contain a single fiber bundle. The idea is that every voxel's orientation diffusion density is comprised from signal originating from one or more fiber tracks at different orientations and scales. Mathematically, this means we take our response function, and combine it in a variety of angles and fractions to create the orientation diffusion density. The angles and fractions are the fiber orientation density. The fractional term affords the ability to account for partial volume effects in a voxel. For example, if we are measuring spins in a voxel that instead of containing a whole fiber tract, contains only a partial tract, there will be fewer spins diffusing along that orientation. As a result, the diffusion orientation density will be scaled down in that direction. To properly match this diffusion density, the fiber density is lesser, resulting in a scaled down contribution from the response function in that orientation. Overall, the mathematical process we use to combine the response function with the fiber orientation density is termed convolution. If we know the fiber orientation density, we can convolve it with the response function to produce the diffusion orientation density. However, it is the diffusion orientation density we derive from scanner measurements, and the fiber orientation density which we want to create. To do this, we deconvolve the diffusion orientation density with the response function to estimate the underlying fiber orientation density. It's noteworthy spherical deconvolution here is an ill-posed mathematical problem. This means there are likely other fiber orientation densities which can be convolved with the response function to produce the exact same diffusion density. Because of this we must impose constraints on the deconvolution, and diligently verify the process is working as intended. It's also noteworthy that this process is often performed on diffusion signal instead of diffusion orientation density models. However, because signal is smaller where diffusion is greater, we need to reshape our response function to represent the ideal signal from a single coherent fiber tract. Now, if we look at signal from a fiber crossing voxel, with small values along axon directions, and then we plot those signal values as a sphere. We can see how deconvolution can be done to produce a fiber orientation density representative of axon orientations. This concludes our segment on fiber orientation density, next we will look at more comprehensive compartmental models.